We've been waking up at 3.45 in the morning to get ready. We put basically a embroidery hoop with a bag on it to a cavity that has um, eggs or nestlings. And then we hope by morning time, um, when the sun comes up, the bird will leave the cavity and get captured. And then we can put the tag on, color bands, measurements, all this stuff that um, is pretty unique for the woodpeckers. They haven't been captured very many times. So we're learning all this information from basic, how big are they here to where do they go? We are here at White River Wildlife Area studying the Lewis's woodpecker. They are a green and red woodpecker found in the area, a very unique species. Um, we're doing this in partnership with the Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife and Cal Poly Humboldt, um, together working to try and understand this population here at White River because they're special. The tagging project at White River um, is funded by an Oregon Conservation and Recreation Fund grant looking at locally um, home range sizes of these tagged birds and how they associate with different habitats there. And then at a larger scale, um, it's believed that these woodpeckers at White River Wildlife Area, some amount of that population is residential and it's the only residential population remaining in the state of Oregon. Our crew has been working to capture Lewis's woodpeckers and put small um, radio tags on them that help track their movement and will help us understand their migration. So the population here um, is the only year-round population found in Oregon. There are Lewis's woodpeckers nesting in other areas of Oregon, but here is special, so they spend winter here as well. And so some migrate, they leave the area, some stay, and we want to understand what the drivers are to why they stay and why they go. So this is an important species because we do live in an altered disturbance regime. And that is probably one of the reasons that we're seeing decline in this species because we have seen that alter and we're not seeing, we're seeing dramatic wildfire events that you know wipe out all habitat. And we're not seeing that kind of really great middle ground that this species needs of naturally occurring, um, slow burning fires um, that, that exist on the landscape. So Lewis's woodpeckers are commonly associated with uh, naturally occurring wildfire burns. Uh, they use those because they're not your typical woodpecker. They have a less robust bill, so they're not able to drill into trees that um, normal species of woodpeckers would be able to, which means it's difficult for them to create their own cavities. So they either have to try to find an abandoned cavity from a different species that can drill that cavity for them, or they have to have uh, decayed uh, wood and snags to be able to make those cavities in those nests to rear their young. Additionally, um, when you have a fire, you typically have a lot of regrowth that might be, you know, you open up the canopy so you're able to see more shrubs and forbs, and those all make insects, which is great for the Lewis's woodpeckers because they're insectivores, so they're eating those flying insects. They primarily forage in the summer, at least, by flying around beautiful um, maneuvers, very, very good at flight. And many times you'll see them with mouths full of insects to bring two nestlings in their cavities um, to deliver to them. So we see that a lot. Um, and they'll do that mostly. And then in the winter, they'll eat acorns. So not like a woodpecker, like a hairy woodpecker you might see pecking into a tree and we are monitoring those cavities. So we have over 50 cavities that are active nests this summer here at White River. And we're monitoring them every couple of days using a camera system that we can reach up to 52 feet tall. And we've got nests that are just about above my eye height, so about six feet tall. So there's a variation. Um, and we look in with the camera and we get to count how many nestlings they are, see them grow from basically little, what I call gummy bears, they're pink, they can't hold their heads up to um, 
big, bright-eyed um, fledglings that are about to fly, and we've even captured a few of them to try and figure out what their movement behavior is like. So by putting tags on birds, we can understand, um, we tagged these birds in the breeding season, and we can understand, okay, they're here in the breeding season. Is there a time where they leave for the winter? We can also look at um, their, their use of habitats during the summertime, and if that differs from the use of habitats during the wintertime. So this, this project is really um, wonderful to get at some of our key data gaps on this species so that we can manage it better across the state. So we can see they're flying really well. They were still kicking. 